Hey everyone, Shark here. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to our first cast post Onyx Shark patch. Uh, we got a 1v1 for you today on Road to Tunis, and it's a pretty meta matchup between Americans and Vermont that really highlights some of the changes you see in the patch and the multiplayer balance. The plan is the axis. We have USA, USA, USA from Canada. Plan is the Vermont, ranked number 27 overall. He's going to use the breakthrough battle group. And then Ares. From America, playing as the Americans, but not named USA, ranked number 42 overall with the Americans, playing as the Armored Battle Group. I promise this will get really confusing over the course of the match. Casting this one with me is Spades, a true intellectual and someone who really enjoys digging into the stats of the game. Uh, this match features some really aggressive and clean play. You can feel like the high level micro that both of these players possess, and you can also really feel that both the difference in the infantry engagements and then the changes to some of the vehicle movement and physics and reaction to getting getting hit with anti-tank rounds. So uh, this is a super fun one. I hope you enjoy. And with that, we'll roll on to the match. So everyone, today we got this 1v1 on road to Tunis. Uh, here on the north side of the map, or the left side of the screen default view is USA, 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 who's ironically from Canada. He's got a pioneer building a Ketten crowd and immediately getting his infantry company out. And then on the south side of the map, right hand side of the screen, is Ares playing as the Americans, getting an engineer and one of these super cool 200 manpower jeeps. Casting this one with me, like I said in the intro, is my boy Spades. Um, and these guys, <laughs> sorry, I didn't immediately cut you off. <laughs> um, yeah, so they're USA saying, how do you like the new patch? I think I see that chat comment in almost all of these games uh, as we load in. Hey, Spades, have you played much of the new patch? Uh, so this is actually the second day of the patch that we're putting this up. I have played three games and they were all threes matches just messing around. So I can't say I have a deep understanding of the new meta. Yeah, I, I would put myself in the same boat. I played a couple of 2v2s with uh, with Sepas right after it came out. And I, I like the infantry combat so far, but there are definitely some nuances uh, that I don't totally get yet I, I know Ares really wants the Wehrmacht 8 rods fixed um, he's maintained that as an option meanwhile uh, actually no sorry I got it backwards Ares is the American player they got to be all messed up with the guy the USA guy playing as a Wehrmacht I'm, I'm just a, I'm just a mess Ares locks in armored battle group he gets better and crews out and so he's got his jeep capping up the east side of the map, supported by scouts. And then he's got a couple rifles, or one rifle squad, one engineer on the south side. Two Grens for USA. I think what I'm looking for, because uh, the riflemen are supposed to be better than the Grens at short and mid-range. But it, I'm interested in seeing how the rifles fare against the Grens this new patch with the changes in accuracy. Yeah, the new time to kill, I'd say that the Grens probably have a coin flip, if not a slight advantage in point-blank combat, uh, which is neat. Uh, so until the bars come out, the Riflemen should probably engage from range, which we can see here that Ares is sticking to. Yeah. I But I like the change in that it kind of forces you to play from cover and makes cover a lot more meaningful. Um, what's really what was always tilting for me is the guy standing out in the open. Uh, and just kind of absorbing rounds and not taking any losses. So Pioneer's forced off on the east side by the scouts and the jeep. MG42 coming out now for uh, for USA. There we go. Grens knock down a, a rifle model. There's a second Gren squad here. I think 2v1s are going to be so much more punishing. Let's see, this rifle squad, they need healing already. Here comes the Jeep and his second rifle squad to help. Yeah, another patch note here is that that Jeep is now a couple manpower less 40, I believe, by exact. Uh, meaning that it's possible to not be punished from having a mine blow up your Jeep as harshly as he used to be for the expensive cost. Yeah, I, you know, I thought the Jeep was fairly balanced before, but you're right, it's a little bit lower risk. I think it's just a buff to the armored battle group at this point. Uh, Engineers taking some damage, but the flamer forces off one grenadier squad. Scouts, Kettenkrod, MG42 facing off on the opposite side of the map. Race for the door. 
Captain out, so infantry support center out, and then USA going for the Panzer Grenadier Company. The P-Grand's got a pretty substantial buff. So we'll see how this goes. And, and we'll see how this engagement works out. I was worried based on the patch notes that garrisons would become even more overpowered. But the Gren's actually not doing a ton of damage and they're forced to retreat between the rifles uh, and the captain. MG42 setting up now across the street. He's going to walk right into the arc. Yeah. All right, so USA now locking in breakthrough. Oh, Jeep on the flank of MG here, plus the captain in the building. This is one thing I've noticed is team weapons just take so much more damage and drop models faster. So if your MGs are out of position, you're going to feel it a lot more. And that's only specifically for the early game. If you can manage to keep your team weapons from getting decrewed, they get a myriad of health bonuses now and damage reduction at that three. Uh, so it all comes down to proper positioning early will reward you later with higher durability. Yeah, that, that's fair. All right, Pegrin's now pushing on these rifles, and they got a significant long-range accuracy buff. Supported by Grenadiers as well, I think the Wehrmacht will definitely win this engagement here. Oh, here come the MP40s for the, uh, the Grens. Well, Grens, meanwhile, Panzerfaust, the Jeep, now sprinting to try to chase. But it looks like that Jeep's gonna get away. P Grens force off both rifles. Brand new time to kill with the, uh, the no cover. Yep. And now we see, uh, USA upgrading healing in his base as well. Even more important now. Ares has a Greyhound coming out. I really hope he builds the Wrecker. Mine going down on the uh, west side of the map. We have finished the research. So Ares Being a new patch, this is still a fairly classic matchup. Breakthrough versus Armored for US. Yeah. Gren's using their healing with the Panzer Grenadiers. There's a nice synergy here. P Grens don't get the sprint anymore, but the Grenadiers do, so, you know... Good play here can can really make dividends. Um, I think the Greyhound doesn't get the canister shot without the mechanized support center. So uh, Greyhound's still very powerful, but that canister shot ability is super super strong. And now we see USA immediately getting a pack forty out. Good micro on the MG42 to suppress the one rifle squad. P Grand's come out to force it off. Oh, white phosphorus rounds coming in on the Greyhound, but the MG is actually going to retreat. This might be a dead engineer down here in the south. Oh, the, oh my gosh. First shot does a ton of damage. Greyhound's going to push. The, and Ares thinks better of it. He grants force off the rifles. Ares upgraded healing in his base. Oh, Gren's gonna get this Faust off here. Engineer is very close to repair, but the Greyhound will have to back up because the engineers will take the additional damage from the P Grens. It looks like he'll safely get home and get some repairs off. Yeah, they're gonna retreat to base. Jeep on flank. And now here comes another squad of Grenadiers. So USA doing a great job of again using the Grens for field presence and really just kind of keeping these American light vehicles at bay. Now Ares hasn't seen, has he seen the Pac-40? I don't believe he has. Jeep forces away the Ketten crowd on the east side of the map. Man, these P Grens. They finally drop a model and immediately get merged by the Grenadiers. And they might right. be walking back so they can get some meds from them as well. Yep. Yep, there it is. Textbook, right there, boys. Yeah, that's that's smart play and really difficult to counter. MG42 in this garrison is great for suppression. Now rifles against the MP40 Grens. 
One on one, this is favorite they're gonna do is with two rifle squads and the Jeep, these guns are gonna take some damage. The enemy has claimed our territory for uh, the P guns got healed up really fast. Good grenade dodge by Ares. Now a second Greyhound out. Scouts the cover. Scouts smoke the MG. MG refocuses uh, in the center. Greyhound's on flank. The Pack 40 is backing up. Fight to the last man! It, now it sets up to try to protect these P Grens from the Greyhounds. Oh, only two models left. The Grens come out to try to throw some snares. The Greyhounds are going to flip around. They'll decrew the Pack 40 and try to knock it out. One Greyhound eats a Faust and gets an engine crit. Rifles move up. Yeah. Scouts pretty much get knocked out immediately when they recruit, but then rifles will pick it up. And that AT gun slowly moving its way back to the American HQ. Captain's gonna push off the Kettenkrod. Oh, Pack 40 hits the other Greyhound. Overall, that was a solid push and a big win for Ares. Oh, yeah, huge. The Pack 40 is the best AT gun in the game. And just denying that to USA is super helpful. He gets a second Pack 40 out almost immediately. And with that acquisition of that AT gun, Ares rewards himself with bars. <laughs> yeah. Now he's getting a second, he's getting an M1 AT gun out now. Uh, USA getting another Pack 40 out. So I think both sides recognizing the need to be ready for, uh, for armor here. You've got USA with 140 fuel banked up. So I bet you we'll see the Panzer Company relatively shortly. MG42 back in the center garrison here. It's a really powerful position. But Ares uh, with both of the outside fuel points right now. So he's at a, a significant tech advantage here. Plus 33 fuel. That's going to add up quick. Anti-tank gun and crew are ready for orders. Oh man, Pack 40 caught just a little out of position. I bet a you slight did. critique of this current situation is that the Kettenkrad is constantly trying to go cap, but it's never in a position to spot for those AT guns, which is a crucial moment in this match to provide that vision. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, and I, you know, it is useful as a capping element, but you're right. If it was spotting for the AT guns, to be able to do a lot more damage to these Greyhounds. Ares wisely moving the Greyhounds onto the flank, trying to attrit these P grinds. Here comes the Captain's Mortar Barrage on the MG. You know, the Greyhounds go try to hunt down these Grenadiers. The Panzerfaust comes out, but the AT gun's out of position. Mortar Barrage coming in on the MG-42. Just a little bit off, so the MG-42 still hasn't dropped a model. I don't know if- there we go, there's one. I don't know if that was the veteran C or what, but MG-42 fared fairly well. And Ares does eventually win the engagement, but that was a pretty good stand there from USA. And he's got the Panzer Company coming now. And there's a brief lull in the action here. Uh, Another retirement plan for your 4x4 is to get that upgraded scout commander, which currently Ares is taking advantage of in order to view any units coming in off his peripherals to make sure that he doesn't get surprised. Yeah, uh, I think with some of the, the changes to TTK, uh, you'll find Reki to be really useful in making sure that, you know, you get your guys into cover before the enemy gets his guys in. I oh, mean, so... Ares getting another engineer out. They'll most likely get minesweepers, considering these scouts just found a mine here on the north side of this little square. They used AT guns to knock down that church, so USA won't be able to throw his MG in there anymore. USA is only about a minute away from a Brumbear. And then to your point earlier, Kettenkrod out here on the flank. Uh, looks like the Jeep's going to go try to run it down. And stops the cap of the VP. Kettenkrod backs up, and here comes the push in the middle. P Grins occupy cover. AT guns in the rear. MG42 in support. Grins on the flank. 
Oh, the red here is fine. <laughs> What's that? Ketten isn't spotting. I'd really like to see that Ketten face directly and uh, turn on recon mode in order to view uh, his opponent's uh, composition. Yeah, a little bit of a missed opportunity here. Greyhound's on the flank. The pack 40 is going to, one pack 40 is going to set up. Oh, the Grens take a huge volley there and are forced to retreat. Here, the first pack 40 round comes in. Greyhound's back off. Engineer's in place to immediately repair. Very methodical advance from Ares here. And then the Captain Barrage comes in onto the MG42. So he's very patient, didn't waste it on the Panzer Grenadiers. Forces MG42 to displace, but it's immediately going to set up a heavy cover. And then on the opposite side here, you got the Greyhounds flanking away at the Panzer Grenadiers. Rifleman moving up. It's crazy. This one P Grand squad doing a fairly decent job of holding up against three rifle squads. Here comes the bundle grenade. Ares sees it. Oh, a lot of damage. And so three models are going to get away with just a sliver of health. Here we go. Pour it on them. P Grand's taking Throughout a lot of damage. Throughout that entire advance, uh, the tank depot is getting put down for Ares. He's tacking on the back of this to eventually move into EZ-8s, I assume. Yeah, and it looks like he's got a, a fighting position going in right here on the center. Stoss trooping out for USA now. So Stoss trooping did not get a buff in the latest patch. Uh, so interesting to see what their value is here. Um, especially with the number of US light vehicles on the field. For as good as the Stas are, I don't think they need it. <laughs> yeah. Now, I guess, oh man, immediate suppression of both rifle squads. The enemy has taken a victory Grenadiers point. on the flank. I wonder what, there we go. He retreats the rifles there. I was wondering what the thought process was. Machine gun being upgraded. Huh? An MG fighting position. Very impressive. <laughs> the, uh, the float that Ares is having is impressive. Yeah, but it's about to go down to these AT guns, and there's no real counter with no artillery on the field. Panzerfaust comes in, but the AT guns uh, can't hit the Greyhound from here. Recommendation for newer players placing fighting positions or bunkers are often best to place in defensive positions on the flanks instead of down the center where it's easiest for your opponent to attack them. That's a good point. And here we've got USA's down to under 100 VPs, but he's about to cap this east side VP. The center is uh, untaken, so that'll balance it out evenly here. USA thought about a Panzer IV and instead is going for a Brumbear. Yeah, Jeep's going to struggle to push off these Grenadiers. They'll do a bunch more damage and then have the ability to sprint and Faust. Wow, the rapid production for the breakthrough commander, the Brumbear is already on the field. You know, Ares is on like easy 8 production, but he is another minute and a half away from the, the fuel for that. And then Pioneer's coming over here to try to counter cap the opposite VP. So Ares... Let's see if this recovered pack here can do some work in pinning this Brumby. Yeah. And bounce. Oh, yeah, first shot bounces. Oh, man. Captain and engineers, though. Those engineers are done. No, but they're going to get away. Ah. Get of their teeth. <laughs> Couple of AT guns set up here. Riflemen are able to counter the Grenadiers on the east side, so they'll be forced off. Pioneers do cap the west side VP, though, so... Uh, USA gets away from the VP pressure for now. Uh, Ares finally getting a mortar out. I like this. It's a good counter to that MG42. More reliable than the captain's off-map barrage. Brumbear moving over to the flank to deal with these rifles. Supported by a Stoss trooping. Now, he, look at this. He's got the Kettenkrod in the middle scouting like you asked. Information is king. Yeah. Ares is going to put the VP pressure back on here with these engineers. Oh, there we go. There's a penetrating shot with the M1. 
Pack 40 moves up as well. Scouts use the smoke to try to get some, some capping done. Pigrens move up on him. And then attack ground with the Brumbear. Oh, the scouts are just getting burned down. They run away. A couple of penetrating shots. Two penetrations on the Brumbear, so it takes some damage. It'll have to back up. Greyhound. That critical juncture where the uh, EZ-8 is going to be on the field shortly. There you go. That that sight from the Kettenkrod allows the Pack 40 to get a third shot off. And then one Greyhound goes down. Rifles force the Sauce Trooping off with the, the price of some uh, damage from the Red Phosphorus Grenade. There you go. They're going to put some pressure on this MG. And then it gets smoked. Attack ground misses the Greyhound. So now you can see Ares, he's really trying to put pressure on the VPs here. First easy eight in production. But yeah. Oh. Rumbear very, very hurt, but is trying to deal with these uh, riflemen. Easy eight hits the field. On the new patch, it's important to mention the use of the mortar that Ares is fluctuating back and forth between the high explosive barrage and the smoke barrage because the auto fire is slowed down to the point where it's not that useful of a tool unless you're using both of those barrages as frequently as you can. Yeah, which I really appreciate from a micro perspective. It's harder to do, but it rewards the players that have the skill and the awareness to do it. And Ares and USA, honestly, both very much qualify. Yeah, uh, to your point earlier about the Team Weapon Veterancy, the MG42 certainly feels more durable now that it's got Vet 2 than it did at the start of the match here. Once it hits Vet 3, it not only gets health bonus, but also a 20% damage reduction from all sources to help it survive a lot of indirect fire and artillery pieces in the future. Yeah, that damage reduction seems a bit strong. I think I would prefer, like, received accuracy over a straight damage reduction. Oh, it does remind me of a time during Code 2 where the Grenadiers, which they still do, had the ability to get Vet 3 damage reduction and could survive Katusha rockets, which was super <laughs> frustrating. Yeah. I mean, that's why they went in Co2, they went to a received accuracy model versus an armor model because the armor just ended up being overpowered and, and protected too much from like explosives uh, and tank munitions. Now a P4 out. So getting a decent balance. And honestly, he doesn't really need the super heavy anti-tank with those two pack 40s in the back. As long as he's got that Ketten spotting for him, it should be in a pretty healthy position. Also, using that stealth to his advantage to make it so even with uh, the ability to spot the scouts, it doesn't reveal the stealth. Players do. Alright, Captain Artillery coming in. Uh, trying to displace some of these team weapons. It's effective and now smoke coming in as well. Nice sequence there. Now the Panzer Grenadiers move up. Bundle grenade comes in on the rifles. Ooh. Retreat. Yeah, retreat at the right time. They get away with just a bunch of damage. Rumbear also chunked away at rifles further to the south. Easy eight rotates and now another squad of Stoss trooping out as well. Yeah, Ares really needs another Easy eight. It's starting. I feel like USA is starting to generate critical mass here. Pack four the next over. point. The, the critical mass of Easy eights late game for the U.S. Is typically puts them over the edge. Of the So both sides trade some shots, but neither wants to commit. USA with two of the three VPs down to 49 total victory points, but in a good spot right now to put the drain on Ares here a little bit. While USA is mining up, he could do with some sandbags down as well. Yeah, I think that's going to be even more important now that cover is so valuable for some of these infantry engagements. And a good defense set up here in the center 
With MG42, the P-Grants for flexibility, a camouflage pack 40, and a Kettenkrod spotting. And then on the flank, he's got the Brum Bear with the P4. AT gun and Easy 8 do some damage to the Brum Bear. But a pack 40 and P4. So oh, the mine goes off. Is that his own mine? Yeah, it was. He literally just put that down, I think. Just set off by the AoE from the AT guns. Now here come the people. Hit you right in the feels when your own mines cause oh, your own fate to be sealed. Drives me crazy. Ares here using the tank riding ability to, to take these rifles over here to this VP. Now that USA has a triple cap on with his second easy eight. Greyhound tries to chip away the Sasha and gets forced back by the P4 and the AT gun. Ares finally taking grenades now. I think he really needs this to help deal with that MG42 on the side. Meanwhile, USA getting the tier 4 veterancy upgrade. Ares going to cap up the east side VP and then probably go pursue these sauce trooping. Victory point is under enemy at the moment, buffed up and cracked out with shock assault, so it's not the best time to start fighting them. With an easy 8 though, that's, that's a different story. Yeah, it's a different story. Easy 8 moving up here. There's one pack 40, but if he spots it and gets on the flank, he could roll up this whole position here for USA. P4 moving for support. Yeah, P4 with a, a pack 40. The Easy 8 and the Rifle Squad are going to move to try to push off these stars here, trying to capture the fuel. And they just wisely retreat. Good attempt. I like the grenade on retreat. It lands where it's supposed to, but the Stoss Troopers just don't take much damage. We have lost control of a victory point. These cap this captain has to be careful here. Good use of the mortar barrage to force the AT gun to... Oh. Brum bear and the grenadiers. Oh man. One more good shot on these grens, but they won't get it. Pack 40 is going to force that Greyhound back. Oh, and that rifle squad needs to be careful too. Wow, Brum bear bounces the pack 40 shot. That M1 actually penetrates. Oh, here it goes. Now here's a big volley coming in. So you can destroy activated the easy eight going in for the kill on the brum bear here and Ares on the opposite side of the map also pushing the p4 brum bear goes down on the west side so good simultaneous push there by Ares. uh really trying to to overtax usa really showcasing the ability of seek and destroy that movement speed and fire rate and accuracy are just stellar yeah, that was a that was a great push. Uh, second Panzer IV out for USA to replace the lost Brum Bear. Um, probably necessary against uh, the dual Easy Eights, but um, also just not going to be as effective against infantry, right? Because the infantry didn't get a, a health nerf; they just uh, other infantry got a damage buff. So um, I think you're going to see the P4 is going to uh, against riflemen is going to look a lot like it did in previous iterations previous updates these dual engineers doing a lot of work over here repairing the greyhound and both easy eights here come the grenadiers pushing in the center with the rifles grenade goes out good dodge the rifles forced to back off Ideally, if you were USA, you would prefer to stall for the Tiger, but given the amount of strain that Ares has put on his VP drain, it's just not feasible. Hence why the overinvestment in P4s and potentially the, besides the veterans the upgrade, the side skirts would be a viable option to keep him in this game. Yeah, I think the Tiger might be a little risky here. Oh, Greyhound and Easy 8 finally knock out the Vet 3 MG42. Now, EZ8 and Greyhound against the Stoss with Pack 40 stuff on the flank. Greyhound at risk of going down. But the Pack 40 shoots at the EZ8 instead, so the Greyhound will get away. The second EZ8 comes up, clears the MG again. The P4 comes into support, but Ares is right back to reinforce or repairing his vehicles. But now rifles come up to push. Ooh, good that use of the That burst first. really tortured that. And it gets cleared. It's a great mortar micro. A 
Stoss Troop been taking some damage from the rifles here. The BARs in port on. Oh man. Stoss Troop been down to one model, but they'll get away. And AT guns and tanks trading shots across this gap here. Now the AT guns targeting that decreed pack 40, trying to knock it out. Rifles absorbing some damage in the center, but managed to capture that center VP. And you see Aries just trying to maintain pressure. Rifles against uh, the Grenadiers here. The BARs really improved their damage output. Money's on the Grens, but not at two models. I thought it. I thought it was. But yeah, they're they're gonna retreat. On the opposite side, the P4s rotate to try to help, but that actually just opens up the center for Aries and his Easy Eights. And now one of them going over here to challenge these P-Grens, and if they get caught out of position, this is very dangerous. Fortunately, they have a ton of health, so they won't cap that BP, but they'll de decap it. Third Easy Eight coming out for Aries, and USA really needs uh, just a slightly more beneficial trade here. He hasn't really been able to knock out any of Ares' stuff, minus that captain uh, and one of the Greyhounds and the Jeep. Um, yeah, and you can kind of see that in the KD as well. Not a huge advantage for Ares, but um, it just feels like he's done a better job of winning the engagements, which has helped him maintain control of, of the VPs. So Easy 8 bounces a pack 40 shot. Sauce Troop get chunked down by the two Easy 8s. It is surprising that the Easy 8 still managed to bounce that pack 40 shot, even at max range, given that it's Vet 3. You would think it would pen every time. I, it's it's just got to be a function of the range. Because the pack 40 has great penetration uh, in its near. I want to say it's like 360 or 340. Oh man, that volley from the Easy 8s. Engineers, though, repairing in contact, taking a lot of damage. Stoss Troop had knocked down to two models and a sliver of health, but they'll survive. The Stoss Troop in the center. And these Easy 8s just honestly absorbing pack 40 rounds. They're finally forced to back up by the P4s on the flank. It's just Greyhound. likely that we're going to bounce these P4 shots. This is what I was alluding to earlier. That critical mass of EZ-8 is what allows the U.S. to finish the job. Yeah, and these P4s really caught out of position. The AT guns push on it. And it looks like Ares is going to take this one here. He's got... Yep, and that's it. All right, everyone. So before we get into the post-match with spades, I'm just going to run through the build order here. So USA, 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 playing as the Wehrmacht Breakthrough Battle Group, starts a pretty standard opening, Pioneer, Kettenkrod, Infantry Company, into two Grenadiers and an MG42, um, and then he goes straight into the Panzer Grenadier Company. So one thing that we noticed, um, we'll talk about a little bit later, is this is a pretty light start. Um, I think based on fuel, he was tempted to go into the Panzer Grenadier Company pretty much as soon as he had that 50 fuel. Might have been better served by getting a mortar or another Grenadier squad out on the field early before attacking. That said, he gets a Panzer Grenadier squad. He selects his breakthrough battle group to put MP40s on his Grenadiers. He texts the med station and then ends up building three pack 40s, mainly because he loses one to Ares. Uh, then he builds his Panzer company and he combines Stoss Truppen, a Brumbear, uh, and a P4, uh, and then upgrades his Panzer officer quarters, gets a second Panzer IV out when the first when the Brumbear dies, uh, and that's all he ends up having for the rest of the match. Now, Ares playing as the Americans, the, the armored battle group. Uh, pretty versatile start here. The scout, an engineer, into a barracks. Selects your armored battle group for the vehicle veterancy. Then he gets a jeep, two riflemen, Tex infantry support center, and then gets a third rifle. So he's got a lot of map presence with uh, six infantry squads, uh, if you include the captain, plus the jeep there early. Then he goes into the motor pool, uh, gets two greyhounds when he techs uh, med station, Text BARs, which really help his rifles scale DPS-wise against the Grens. Uh, then he gets an AT gun out, combines it with the Pack 40, so he's got two going into the late game. Ends up getting a second engineer squad because USA is doing a good job laying down mines. That second engineer, he throws a uh, minesweeper on, uses them uh, for sweeping and repairs. Builds his tank depot. Ends up getting a mortar out late game, but it proves to be a pretty good counter for the MG42 and the Pack 40s as the game goes on. 
and then ends up uh, he texts grenades and gets a total of three easy eights out to close out the game. So that's all for the build order. With that, we'll grab spades and roll under the post match discussion. All right, everyone. So we're back, uh, and I got spades here. And so as we were kind of going over the flow of that match, there, uh, spades, you had a comment. Uh, you and your buddy Jake uh, refer to something as as thrashing. So I'm going to kick it over to you and let you explain this real quick. So whenever Red and I, Red Leader to base, uh, make a, a very successful push or that we eliminate some key or critical unit, uh, such as a Brumbar, or we take out a P4, we typically mention it to one another that this player may thrash or become upset uh, and that they will make bad decisions and overly aggressive plays. And you can actually see this at some high level play where when massive losses occur for one player, instead of responding in a way to lick their wounds, they uh, you know, act like a cornered animal and they, they thrash out and they attack as hard as they possibly can, which sometimes catches the opponent off guard. So what Red and I do with one another is notify each other that this player may thrash, pay attention to that. There might be a, a completely unexpected play coming from this person. So yeah. when it came to uh, the topic of thrashing or reeling in a fishing line and that fish is right on the end and it's just about to give up uh, and it's like angry and you know it's upset the most is whenever you get pushed down to a very low vp drain uh i would say that that is equivalent to making limited choices or bad decision making and being forced into it uh which is very similar to thrashing where you make obvious grenade throws or you make bad pushes or you have use units to spot for themselves that shouldn't be spotting for themselves because you feel so limited in time to make something happen to make something turn around for you to keep you in this game no that's a good point and so uh, what I want to do first is say, like, obviously, USA, 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 uh, super high level player. This is not a reflection on his like personal reaction or emotional reaction to play, but rather you're, when you're down to 49 VPs, these are the only options available to you. You have to get aggressive because you have to control two thirds of the map, right? And so he's forced to make plays that, like, not only is the Wehrmacht faction not designed for it, right? The Wehrmacht. Like really good team weapons, good infantry, but a lot of stuff that's designed to almost play defensive. And then you add on to that with the new patch, the higher TTK that rewards defensive cover based infantry play. Now you're pushing into prepared positions held by Ares, who also, by the way, is an extremely competent player at at winning and designing engagements to win. So he's not going to let you get free, like, uh, you know, free trades and engagements. And so now you're pressing into him and you're literally playing right into his hands, right? He can set up engagements the way he wants. He can use the uh, better mobility of the American faction to kind of outflank you or use the speed so he can destroy, which we saw to kill, to kill the Brumbear. And it slowly starts to whittle away, at, whittle away at, at your army composition. So it's one of those things where like the answer to USA's problem is really don't get so far behind on VPs. Which is a totally separate question, right? And uh, and so we talked about this a little bit, but before I, I chime in, if the answer to the end game is don't get so far behind because it forces you to be more aggressive than you want to be for, for USA, what do you think the answer is in his early game uh, to mitigate that? So this match itself is... I, I say this repeatedly, textbook. Uh, this was textbook breakthrough play, textbook armored battle group play from Ares. This is a, a an age-old thing that people should be aware that if you see a Vet 1 Jeep within the first minute of the game, that you know your opponent is armored. And I have to date not seen an armored high-level U.S. player not pull out an M8 as soon as they humanly possibly can with fast deploy. Yeah. So the timing is well known. Um, you can sit in cheat mode and figure out how long it takes for having half the map control it takes for U.S. to pump out one M8. And as soon as you see that first one, Unless you have a tank or a vehicle yourself, odds are they're going to make a second one because the only other option is the U.S. will reactively make a chaffee. Yeah. So for this particular scenario, USA, USA, USA knew that the opponent was armored battle group and that the only decisions I could see him making differently was that 
Uh, most players use their Ketten Crad as a tool to cap, uh, but the moment that he saw that first M8, uh, he should have sat that Ketten behind his initial AT gun mid mm -hmm. in order for it to collect information for it before that second M8 came out and then prepare pro like posture appropriately with a Grenadier for the snare mm -hmm. uh, and then mine up the flanks because that the, the game was partially decided by losing that initial AT gun uh in the early stages of the game yeah uh so i agree with you what i'll what i'll add is i think the breakthrough battle group was kind of wasted here uh he used the mp40 uh upgrade on the grenadiers he used the rapid production but i don't know that he needed the rapid production uh and i also think that like he might have been better served with like the mechanized battle group uh like the raid ability so he can get vehicles to cap um, a little bit of healing, maybe get a stumble out to deal with some of the riflemen. I think the other thing is when you look at his composition, he only had two grenadiers before he tacked to the Panzer Grenadier Company and got a, a P Grand squad out. That's not a lot of infantry, especially against uh, Americans with rifles that can really spread out the map. Uh, three rifle squads, a captain, a scout, engineer. I mean, that's basically a two to one advantage in just maneuver units for the Americans over over the Wehrmacht in the early game. And so if you're going to, you can either try to get more Grenz out, which I think before BARs, Grenz are still in a decent spot against rifles. The P Grenz absolutely in a good spot. But uh, I think if you're not going to be able to go unit for unit with the Americans, you really need to think about uh, like expectation management with capping, right? Not trying to grab all three VPs, not trying to reach for the fuel. Just say like, hey, I need to own my fuel my vp to minimize the drain that he's going to put on me until i can get some of my heavier units out that can start to actively win engagements versus just not lose and i think that's kind of where he fell behind and part of this it's it is the patch right your manpower bleed in the early game is going to be higher if you're relying on infantry units even with the grand's ability to heal and the merge and all that other stuff so if you're not anticipating that you won't have as much out on the field I think realistically, uh, players like I, I catch myself doing this all the time and I'm not even at their level, but I think guys are going to be tempted to tech based on fuel when their manpower and army composition says they should stay where they're at for another minute. And so that would be my kind of recommendation is like, yeah, you got the P grand company out really early, which you really needed was a third squad of grenadiers, maybe a mortar, uh, to start to turn some of these engagements so you can hold the fuel and, and keep the VP counter from ticking down to, to 500 to 100 because that gets back to your point about the thrashing. Now, you're so far behind, you have to play aggressive and you force yourself into, into decisions and engagements that you know you can't win. Well said. <laughs> uh, all right, so on to Ares. Um, so lots of notes for him. I mean, he, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, he, he played this one pretty clean. Like you said, pretty much textbook armored battle group. Uh, did a good job kind of reacting and taking uh, his advantages where he could. That uh, that dive to knock out the Pac-40 really... Um, I mean, that might have spelled the end of this for USA even, you know, 15 minutes into the game of a 31-minute of a game. Uh, what else did you see from Ares that you really liked here? So the topic of that dive is the textbook armored battle group play that Ares had this planned out before this match even started. He knew what he wanted to do and that he skipped healing. Uh, he skipped no upgrades, no nades, no bars. And it was take everything he had and right click it on top of that AT investment, which unfortunately at the time was a singular AT gun. And at the moment that he saw that second a, uh, M8, he then started building the second one, but it was far too late. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's that. And then I think you start to see like, you know, uh, obviously both these guys are top 50 players, but um, Ares' ability to manage engagements across the map at the same time, I think is also kind of what really did it for him. Uh, so when he knocked out that Brumbear, it's worth noting, not only did he use Seek and Destroy, but he also had his second Easy 8 pushing the P4 and the AT guns on the opposite side of the map. It didn't need to win anything, but it's enough to tax the awareness in the micro of USA uh, to the point where he is able to knock out the Brumbear. And then at that point, you see like, okay, instead of having a Brumbear and two P4s, now USA just has 
two P4s. Uh, and that's a that's a pretty big loss considering how much damage that Brombera was doing to the American infantry. So uh, that's just kind of one example, but I thought um, Ares obviously did that well all game because of how much VP control he had. Yeah. So uh, to Ares' credit, I'd say that the example of using seek and destroy as well as for example blitzkrieg or mechanized assault uh, all of them um what they mean to do is to subvert the opponent's expectations as they expect something to go a certain way mm -hmm. uh and now your vehicle has 30 percent movement speed 40 percent accuracy and fires a lot faster that changes the outcome of something that was supposed to be a sure thing for that opponent so yeah. using those abilities such as seek and destroy well executed by Ares. Uh, that was it, it was perfect yeah and this goes back to you know choosing breakthrough over mechanized um breakthrough at that point in the game like you had the blitzkrieg ability uh but really i i think you lack uh like mechanized assault would have been really nice um on the counter push near the end of the game where both the p4s eventually went down mechanized assault on those p4s flanking the at guns with stop strip and pu pushing through the middle would have served the same purpose, right? You take an engagement that you think is going to go one way and you use an ability to flip it on its head. Um, that's something that, I, you know, Ares does really well. And I, I think uh, in choosing Breakthrough Battle Group, USA just locked himself in and, and kept him from having, you know, a late game uh, breaking ability like that. So, um, again, I, you know, I just want to highlight, like, both these guys are phenomenal players. You can tell it's a really high level game just from the lack of mistakes in general that either side really made. Um, so well played to both. Uh, and I know we're, we're just trying to find ways uh, that USA could have closed this one out in his favor. Uh, you know, all of this stuff is really difficult to execute, especially against players of this caliber and in a brand new patch when you're not totally used to how the engagements are going to gonna go out. So, uh, Spades, anything else before we get out of here? Last but not least, is the use of the critical mass of easy eights, which is always going to be your late game as armor battle group for US. As soon as you end up with two or even three of them, uh, that is where you make your, your critical pushes to take your opponent to pieces because they have high anti-infantry, high penetration on vehicles. They're just an overall top-notch unit that also bounces VET-3 pack 40 shots at max range. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and so... Uh, for those who don't know, what makes the EZ-8 different from the 76 mil upgraded Sherman? The EZ-8 is the EZ-8 because it has the high volume spring suspension. It's you know it's a real life thing. But the EZ-8 basically has a really nice suspension, so it rides a lot easier. And so in the game, what that equates to is a full like full accuracy when moving, as opposed to the regular Sherman in the 76 mil, which are only at 75 percent accuracy. So this really when combined with seek and destroy makes it easy it really dangerous because on the move it still has a much higher chance of hitting and penetrating its targets uh than the other uh u.s tank variant so uh keep that in mind when you're seeing easy eights versus uh 76s from the mechanized support center um yeah spades man thanks for uh for staying up late to cast this one with you cheers everybody yeah all right that's all for us guys and we'll catch you all in the next one